today I'm just going to sh be showing you my new wash routine. Um, so let me just start off by trying to show you what I need to make. I'm just trying to put that in the camera. That's spilling it on my laptop, of course. So, this is a clay mixture with apple cider vinegar, and I added just a tiny bit of water just to make it um, a bit lighter. But usually, I just use clay and apple cider vinegar. Um, I will have to say, excuse my speech if it sounds a bit odd, my wisdom teeth has just started growing, or is growing, or has been growing, I'm not quite sure. Um, so the back of my gum is sort of swollen and slightly sore, so I sound a bit like I have a lips and I can't really control it. So that's just it. And what I did, I would say probably use about four spoons of, or maybe even more because I kind of tipped a little bit over, about four spoons of clay. So this size spoons, four, four spoons of clay, so four to five I would say, um, of clay. And really if you made a lighter mixture you would need less clay if you wanted it thicker you would need more clay i would say this will be about enough for me maybe i might add a little bit more water to make it a bit um lighter so that's all that's the clay mixture and because my hair is quite thick, I do need quite a lot to cover my hair. And I don't put it on my actual scar, um, scalp. I just put it from the roots. So not from the roots, just a bit before the roots. So maybe from there. Um, because what you'll find is that most of your build-up is actually from the... It's actually on the tips of your hair till your um, mid limb section. Because if you imagine my dandruff is all cut up, it all kind of reacts to gravity, so it would all kind of fall to there. And also, when you're combing kind of all detangle, you kind of drag that down there with you. So, for me, most of the build up is on um, the tips of my hair till about the, myth, the mid. Um, sections of my hair. So I've I've done um, Banshee knots and I've had these in for I did them on Saturday so I've had them in um, for a couple of days now for about four days now and to be honest if I wanted an amazing stretched out big defined look this would have been perfect. But I did this to get my hair out of the way, my scalp was feeling very sensitive and I just wanted like some fresh hair to just go in there and to also pre-section it and detangle it and keep it detangled um, so that I can shampoo my root thoroughly and I can wash and detangle um, the, se the sections in smaller, more manageable sections. So it's just kind of like a bonus keeping detangling my hair, having a hairstyle for a couple of days and my hair nice and ready and detangled ready for me to wash. So of course my hair would have slightly would slightly isn't even the word would definitely have knotted up by now. And that's just because that's what it likes to do. It likes to knot up. So embrace, embrace, embrace. Um, so I'm just trying to show you how the curls look. I'll probably do another tutorial um, showing you a bantu knot, 
for some reason, I guess when I do do a Bantu knot, it's not necessarily for the Bantu knot hairstyle, so maybe my technique hasn't been perfected. But at the same time, and I don't really use any products, so I kind of pre wash my hair just with water and detangled it and sort of like massage, semi scratch the bottom to kind of uplift any um, dandruffs or build up on the scalp of my hair. But so I just wanted to take some bits out so you can just see what the hair is like. So I will be adding this adding um, the clay mixture and sort of fitting it up away while I massage and wash my scalp. Now what I used for um, the clay mixture, clay wash, whatever you prefer to call it, is that as a tech secret healing clay and I'm sure you've seen so many of these so many times. So initially I didn't buy this for washing hair that this was initially um, for my face so I have very oily spot prone skin um, and this was to kind of help that unfortunately I'd love to say that I can give a review about how this has helped my skin um, but I haven't really kept to it. I've been once in a blue moon, I've used it on my skin, so not very often. I don't even think I've done this for about the whole year. And it's now August, so. But I would think if you want um, beautiful skin and you want really healthy long hair or healthy hair in general whether it's long or short you do have to kind of be disciplined and also um don't want to say high maintenance but you have to be able to set a aside that time and to not get sidetracked or to not think oh I can't be bothered like some, um so yeah so this was initially for my skin sorry I got a bit sidetracked and um mm, I don't know about so much about the skin I think I would have to use it every week or every two days and see how that would work for me to actually give a positive review about it and I haven't actually really done that but when I have when I have used it it did feel it did feel like it was doing something good to my skin it did make my pores, my pores feel tighter and also I felt um I don't know I felt very like just very clean so the feeling that it gave felt really good um so yeah that's that and I haven't used this so often on my hair, so a couple of times since I started using the clay wash to wash my hair and when it comes to product build up and getting rid of that, this has been the best. Because I don't know what it is, but shampoo, I just find that no matter how much I rinse, there's still product build up or fluff or it's still there it just doesn't really get rid of all of it and I find that this has been the cleanest that my hair has ever felt when I have used it on my hair which is kind of surprising because it's so difficult because it's difficult to wash out or it's supposed to be difficult to wash out but it actually leaves my hair really really clean and then I just use normal apple cider, apple cider vinegar so any apple cider well not any but just a natural trustworthy brand Sainsbury's Tesco any shop doesn't have to be too expensive I didn't use anything special it's not something that I'm keeping in my hair I'm going to be washing it out um so and you also want to use something that you would eat so if you wouldn't have this in your salad or whatever you would use apple cider vinegar to do I wouldn't suggest in it in your hair so that's the mixture for the clay and um, what I'm going to use to wash my scalp 
will again be apple cider vinegar. That's also really good on my scalp. And um, tea tree oil. Now this, although it says 100% pure, it's not because it's blended with um, a carrier oil, so almond oil. Um, I haven't been able to find a trustworthy brand where it is definitely 100% tea tree, but I don't mind almond oil, so I still feel like it's getting the best of both. Um, so yeah, that's just a, so you can get this from any, I'm not sure about in America but, or any other country, but you can get this in most um, British hair shop and excuse me now, it's okay, it's, it's been a little bit. So that's it and I don't usually, so sometimes if my hair feels very itchy or sore on my scalp, not hair, um, I just rub that on my scalp and it usually helps relieve that feeling but the smell is very strong so I have to warn you. So if you put that in your hair and you don't plan on washing it off, just be aware that it's not a bad smell but it's a very kind of... Um, Think of a massage therapy oil, like very, very strong and medicated. It smells soothing, but maybe not um, like a perfume, more like medicine. So yeah, that's what I use. And I originally started using this on my hair amongst other things so what else did i try to use on my scalp i think it was peppermint oil but i couldn't really find any um, and i used this um because so i looked up apple cider vinegar as well because i was trying to find out um felt like i had really really itchy scalp some sores on my scalp as well and i went to the doctors and they were just like your scalp is fine you don't have an infection um, or one that's so bad that you need to actually take any medication for, you don't have ringworm, but my scalp was very, very itchy, I had sores on it, um, and they just said your hair is very thick, so I'm not, I said doctors, like I went to so many doctors, but the particular nurse and another doctor I saw, they just kind of said you can't really see anything, which isn't really a solution, but, um, so, I find like I have to sort of go away to use my own things and I don't really want to take just medication or antibiotics if I don't actually know what's wrong with my hair but it was very itchy and uncomfortable and I lost so much hair so much hair that was last year summer my scalp was so sensitive and itchy and painful um, like if I would touch it and even now I still get that once in a while but it's not as bad and I had so much hair loss and I think that was maybe partly due to stress and also maybe keeping hair extensions like the cornrows in too long, maybe a lace wig that I'd use and when you also get your hair braided and sharing the hair comb so I don't know what it was but it was definitely kind of infection so sometimes some of the um, hair habits I've gotten hasn't necessarily come from trying to get long hair or trying to have healthy hair it's actually come from either my sensitive skin so that's where I would say organic things sort of started and then I realized using um, more natural um, products on my hair um, on my hair was also beneficial for my hair and skin um, because the pre-made sort of products they have so many things in there and I would end up getting more spots as well and just discoloration of my skin um, that kind of thing so yeah that's really what helped me to get into healthier things and not so much hair now going back to this, just a quick point, I did use this for my hair and I also, for my skin, and I also used another treatment and that was like a, a I'm trying to remember the name, an acid, that, that's not helpful, not an acid, but um, an acid that's supposed to be um, good for 
for um, acne prone skin and also um, getting rid of um, skin cells, dead skin cells and helping the skin to become clearer. Now with that I actually found that maybe I left it in too long or whatever reason but it burnt my face. Yeah. And my face is very sensitive and I usually um, tan during the summer or get quite a, a bad sunburn. But this kind of burnt my face and I noticed like the complexion of my face sort of changed. I don't know how to explain it. So that's still, so I'm still sort of um, waiting for that to clear up or heal or whatever you may call it. Um, so I didn't really go back to using that again, but it wasn't because of this. But if you have had any experiences where this has caused your skin tone to change or made your skin more, um, made it irritate it. Um, to be honest, I do think I did use this and then I used the acid as well. So maybe it was just too much in one day. That might be it, but I would only use this if I did want to do a facial treatment, a scalp treatment or anything else. Now, so these two, I mix them up, and usually when I've washed my hair, I've just applied this directly to my scalp. Um, but this time, I decided to try out a method where um, I put a spray bottle in. So I put warm water, or just tap water, and the apple cider vinegar, and also some of the tea tree oil. Now, I didn't really measure it in any way. I just kind of pour what felt like. So considering that I usually just add this straight to my hair, I just thought maybe this might be easier to apply and make sure I get it on my scalp and to just see if it um, makes any difference. So this is the first time I'm applying this with a, with a um, water mixture and also with a spray bottle. Now for my hair as well, I'm going to use um, Tresemme Naturals. Um, now, I'm not really using this because I actually believe that it's a natural shampoo. Because when I read some of the alcohol, or some of, I was just about to say alcohol because I just read alcohol, but when I read some of the products in here, I wouldn't really say I know so much about products. It definitely doesn't sound natural to me. So this is just literally because I'm not using this to clean my scalp because it would just be so difficult to get out. I'm gonna just use this to get to strip out any oils, any bacteria, anything that I don't want left in my hair, as well as this, which kind of softens the bow. Not really softens the bow, but it's like two shampoos. Um, and that's it really, that's all I'm going to be using and of course I'm going to have a scissors so you will be seeing scissors with me all the time because I just get knots and um, yeah, so I just need scissors that is literally it, maybe um, some hair bands as well to keep my hair out of the way or to put some of the bantu knots out of the way um, so that will be what I'll be using to wash out my hair. I'm also thinking about maybe using a spray bottle because sometimes I feel like I'm rinsing but I don't feel like I've rinsed enough. Like I want to just use the water to just, I don't know. But yeah, so that's it. So I'm going to wash my hair and then I think I might try and bantu knot it straight away after I rinse it out. I'm not so sure. I don't feel like going to bantu each bit individually because I'm I will be tired by the time I finish washing my hair. It is right now a lengthy process, but it's not one that I found that I've really been able to skip because when I have tried to um, not detangle my hair beforehand and section it in a way that I'm able to wash my scalp thoroughly and also not have that much tangles, I find that um, 
it's time consuming after I've washed my hair and also and also I don't get rid of all the product build up or dandruffs or anything and I kind of feel and also the the detangling afterwards so this is I'm gonna detangle beforehand and I'm probably gonna detangle in section again after but even if I don't do that I will just have to detangle a lot more and also the main reason is why I really think that you should detangle your hair before you wash up is if you get a lot of knots and product build up like I do even though you don't use that much product build up sometimes the build up is just tan drugs and things like that and dust and all that kind of stuff that is in the air this mixed with tangles it's not a good combination because you want this to um, glide through your hair when you're rinsing it out not actually clumped together with any tangles that you've got there so i would recommend having your hair as smooth and detangled as possible um so that's all guys literally um and yeah that's all And hopefully, I hope that I won't get as much breakage while I was washing this time. I do always expect, whenever I do my hair, it's almost like I always expect hair to fall out, to be tang to be detangled. And that might sound a bit unhealthy, but actually now when my hair has fallen off or I see a bit of hair or I see tangles, it's just deal with it. It's just how my hair is. Either I need to, I know that I've not um, put my hair away in neat sections or I slept without a satin scarf or I didn't detangle my hair for quite a while and I, it rained and my hair got wet and it shrunk. You know, with, shrink, um, with shrinkage you get a lot of, um, it just kind of shrivels up together. So that intertwines um, and causes single strand knots and also tangles so if you don't deal with that straight away just know that you're going to get knots in your hair and I've done that quite often so I know that it's my fault but at the same time I also know that I have to eat healthy, drink enough water, take care of my scalp, be careful of what I'm touching my hair with or scalp because your skin is just like any, the scalp your hair it's just like any other part of your body and you don't want especially if you have sensitive skin or you have very reactive skin you don't really want to just be touching like everything touch there so yeah that's it so if you're like me and you suffer from a lot of hair breakage and you're just trying to figure out how not for your hair to break because either I've had hair breakage because I've used too much heat when I didn't really know so much about um, my natural hair or I've used um, tight hairstyle or I've been quite rough with my hair myself. Um, the other thing is also when I've gone to hair salons and they have damaged my hair and then if there's been some kind of scalp irritation or I haven't detangled my hair so over the last couple of years there's been a lot of reasons why I've had hair loss and um, so I kind of feel that I'm coming to accept that um, sometimes it's just how things are and other times it's really unhealthy behaviours and um, not being consistent with my hair regimen not detangling my hair, um, not um, putting my hair in a protective style before I go to bed, which is actually one of the main reasons why I get single strand knots and, um, and my hair breaks off. That's literally my fault, no one else's. That's not, that's something that only I can solve um, or relax my hair. It's, re it's really, that's really all it is. Um, so I know that a someone with a, with a different textured hair, so a um, two two or three, or maybe even someone with um, 
before a textured hair might just be able to go to bed with their hair out or in a bun, loose bun, so pineapple, and go to bed and they will get no tangles or all the rain to fall and they will get no tangles and that is that type of hair. That's all it is. Your hair or my hair is not like that. So you kind of have to accept that you just need to do a little bit more. And sometimes there's you don't have time to do that or you have other commitments or you're really just not bothered. And it's not a bad thing. It doesn't mean that you're less black or um, you don't appreciate your hair or you're, you don't take care of yourself. It's just that... Um, Afro hair is very time consuming, very lengthy and after work or uni or whatever else is going in your life, do you really want to sit down like maybe someone like me to put your hair into twist for an hour? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. A lot of the times I don't, so that's how it is. But I will be trying. I will keep trying and to see um, how long my hair will grow if I try and try and try to be a lot more healthier. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Excuse the lips. Mm. Not my actual lips. You can excuse those as well. Excuse the speech and the bad, bad lighting and um, it's me again. Yeah.